So tonight's topic is called history reloading. All right. I'm gonna just get right into it. Get right into it. Uh, Deuteronomy one and one. Deuteronomy chapter one, verse one. Let's start there. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter one, verse one. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel on this side Jordan in the wilderness, in the plain over against the Red Sea, between Paran and Tophel and Laban and Hazaroth and Dizabab. Diz so now, at this point, we are in the wilderness. Okay. We are in the wilderness at this point. All right. So we are with Moses in the wilderness, and Moses. Is the Lord is using Moses to teach us the law. So what you are seeing here says we are on the other side of Jordan in the wilderness, in the plain over against the Red Sea between Paran, Tophel, Laban, Hazaroth, and Giza. Okay, keep going. Verse 2. They are 11 days journey from Horeb by the way of Mount Seir unto Kadesh Barnea. So now what you are seeing here says is the 11 day journey from Horeb by the way of Mount Seir unto Kadesh Bani. Now give me the book of Second Ezra so quick. Let's pop into my head. Second Ezra chapter 14. Mm. Give me Second Ezra chapter 14 and verse read verse 1. We're gonna read down a little bit. Second Ezra chapter 14, verse 1. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass upon the third day, I sat under an oak, and behold, there came a voice out of a bush over against me and said, Ezra, Ezra. Read. And I said, Hear my Lord. And I stood up upon my feet. Keep going. Thank you. You know, stop there. Stop there. Then Hold on. This is now the Lord visiting Ezra. Okay. Um, the same thing that the Lord did for Moses in the bush is the same thing that uh, the Lord is doing with Ezra here to rehash the history because everything was destroyed by Babylon. Babylon had bent up everything of ours. Okay. And that with the help of Esau. So now jump down to verse, verse 16 now. Second Ezra chapter 14, verse 15. Mm -hmm. And set aside the thoughts that are most heavy unto thee, and haste thee to flee from these times. Read. For yet greater evils than those which thou hast seen happen shall be done hereafter. So now give me second Ezra 5 and 2. Second Ezra chapter 5 is 2. Second Ezra chapter 5, verse 2. Mm -hmm. But iniquity shall be increased above that which now, now thou seest, or that thou hast heard long ago. Read that again, verse 2. Second Ezra chapter 5, verse 2. Mm -hmm. But iniquity shall be increased above that which thou now thou seest, or that thou hast heard long ago. So now the Lord is telling Ezra, listen. Sin is going to be increased than you've ever heard it before, or you've ever seen it before. You understand? That's what he's saying. Meaning in these last days, things are going to get worse and worse as a sign of the last day, as a sign of the Lord delivering us out of what? The hands of our enemies. Okay? Now watch this. Go back. Second Ezra. Okay? Go back to Second Ezra. Chapter 14. Verse 15 again. Second Ezra chapter 14, verse 16. For yet greater evils than those which thou hast seen happen shall be done hereafter. So now this is saying this is repeating the same thing over and over. Now jump back up to verse 1. We're gonna read verse 1 to verse 2. Second Ezra chapter 14, verse 1. And it came to pass upon the third day, I sat under an oak, and behold, there came a voice out of a bush over against me and said, Ezra, Ezra. Read. And I said, Hear my Lord. And I stood up upon my feet. So now the Lord is paying a, is paying a visit to Ezra over a, in, a, in a bush. He doesn't say burning bush. He just say 
out of the bush over against me. Okay, watch this. Remember, Ezra is rewriting all the books. He's rewriting the, the books now. Watch this. Give me second Ezra 2. Second Ezra chapter 2, start at verse 1. Second Ezra chapter 2, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Thus saith the Lord, I brought this, I brought this people out of bondage, and I gave them my commandments by my servants the prophets, whom they would not hear, but despised my counsels. But despised my counsels. So so it was back then, so it is today. Okay, jump down to verse 6 now. No, verse, no, six. verse 7. Verse 7, read verse 7. Verse 7, let them be scattered abroad among the heathen. Let their names be put out of the earth, for they have despised my covenant. Because that's exactly what we've done. So when we were put out of the earth, as we went into slavery. That is what Ezra is explaining here at the command of the Father. Now read verse 33 now. Watch this. Verse 31. Second Ezra. Ezra chapter 2, verse 31. Mm-hmm. Remember thy children that sleep, mm -hmm. for I shall bring them out of the sides of the earth and show mercy unto them, for I am merciful, saith the Lord Almighty. Give, read on, keep going. Embrace thy children until I come and show mercy unto them, for my wells run over and my grace shall not fail. That's the reason why we are waking up this day. Watch this. Come on. I, Ezra, received a charge of the Lord upon the Mount Oreb. Upon the what? That I should go upon the Mount Oreb. The Mount Oreb is Mount Horeb. This is Mount Sinai, Mount Zion. Read that again. Second Ezra chapter 2, verse 33. I, Ezra, received a charge of the Lord upon Mount Oreb that I should go unto Israel. But when I came unto them, they set me at naught and despised the commandments of the Lord. So now what you want to notice here is that when, when we left, okay, when we was in the wilderness, what Moses did was that when Moses went, before, he didn't, we were, before we was even in the wilderness, what happened was that the Lord visited Moses, okay, to give Moses a charge of what he needs to do, which is to deliver the children of Israel out of Egypt, out of captivity. So the same, the same way that the Lord spoke to Moses is the same way he's speaking to Ezra. Okay? Now that's a heavy topic, much heavier topic. But what I want to show you is that where Moses, how the Lord communicated with Moses is how he communicated with Ezra. You understand? Um, where Moses went to receive the oracle is the same place that Ezra went. So now we are in the wilderness. Moses is rehashing the history. Okay? So now, go back to Deuteronomy 1. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 1 again. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 1. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel on this side Jordan in the wilderness, in the plain over against the Red Sea, between Paran and Tophel and Laban and Hazaroth and Dezahab. Read. There are 11 days journey from Horeb by the way of Mount Seir to Kadesh Barnea. And to Kadesh Barnea. So Mount Seir, uh, let's go to the book of Deuteronomy 2. Deuteronomy chapter 2, read verse 12. You know what? Read Deuteronomy chapter 2 and verse, verse 4. You know what? Let's start at verse 1. Start at verse 1. Deuteronomy 2 verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse 1. Then we turned and took our journey into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea, by the as what? the Lord spake unto me. By the way of the Red Sea. So those that those of you that have studied, you know what this means. Go ahead. As the Lord spake unto me. And we and we compassed Mount Seir many days. Mount Seir, Mount Seir. So keep that name, keep that name. Keep that name in mind. Go ahead. And the Lord speak unto me, saying, Ye have come past this mountain long enough. Turn you northward. Read on. And command thou the people, saying, 
ye are to pass through the coast of your brethren, the children of Esau, mm -hmm. which dwell in Seir, and they shall be afraid of you. Take ye good heed unto yourselves, therefore. So now the Lord is commanding us to listen, you've been here for too long. Okay, he says we can pass Mount Seir many days. So the Lord is saying, okay, it's time for you to move on to the next to the next point now. So now he says you are to pass through the coast of your brethren, the children of Israel, which dwell in Seir. Okay, jump down to verse 12. Verse 12. The Hurms also dwelt in Seir before time. But the children of Esau succeeded them when they had destroyed them from before them and dwelt in their stead as Israel did unto the land of his possession which the Lord gave unto them. So now what he's saying is that listen, you're going to pass through because I'm not going to give you the, 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 the land of Mount Seir. I'm giving you the land that I promised unto your forefathers. So now he's saying you can, you can pass through Mount Seir but you're not going to dwell there. You can, you can purchase, you can trade, but you're not going to dwell there. Okay, so Mount Seir was given to Esau. So now let's go back. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 2 again. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 2. Read. There are 11 days' journey from Horeb by the way of Mount Seir unto Kadesh Barnea. So 11 days' journey from Horeb by the way of Mount Seir unto Kadesh Barnea. So what you want to notice here is Horeb is Mount Zion, okay? Mount Seir, 11 days journey apart, and to Kadesh Barni. Go ahead. And it came to pass in the 40th year, in the 11th month, on the first day of the month, that Moses spake unto the children of Israel, according to all that the Lord had given him in commandment unto them. Go ahead. After he had slain Sihon, the king of the Amorites, which dwelt in Heshbon, and Og, the king of Bashan, which dwelt at Ashtaroth in Idrei. So now what we're reading here is, um, hold this, give me the book of Genesis 15. Genesis chapter 15, verse 16. Um, we're going to start, start at verse Genesis 15 and verse, yeah, start at read verse 13. Genesis 15, verse 13. Genesis chapter 15, verse 13. Mm -hmm. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them 400 years. So now the Lord is giving Abraham a vision of what will happen to his seed. You understand? He says, you're going to be slaves for 400 years. Okay, you're going to be afflicted as slaves for 400 years. Read on. And also that nation whom they shall serve, will I judge. And afterward, they shall come out with great substance. Read. And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace. Thou shalt be buried in a, gold, in a good old age. Go ahead, come on. But in the fourth generation, they shall come hither again. For the iniquity of the Amorite is not yet full. Read verse 16 again. Genesis chapter 15, verse 16. Read. But in the fourth generation, they shall come hither again, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. So now the Lord is telling Abraham, so he's in the fourth generation, he says, what's going to happen? He says, they shall come hither again, meaning what? Abraham seed. For the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. So now the Lord, what was the Lord saying? Watch this. Give me the book of Revelation chapter 18. Revelation chapter 18 and verse... Revelation 18, we're going to read verse 1. Then we're going to jump. Read verse 1. Revelation chapter 18, verse 1. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. Read that again. Revelation chapter 18, verse 1. Go ahead. And after these things, I saw another, another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. Read on. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, 
Babylon the Great is fallen, is fallen and has become the habitations of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. So now this is the destruction of Babylon. Now jump down to verse 5 now. Verse 5. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. You see that part when it says, for her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Because at this point, guess what? America's sins had reached at to a point where now it's time for the Lord to bring forth judgment on this earth. So likewise, what we read, go back to Genesis 15 now. Verse 15 again. Genesis chapter 15, verse 16. But in the fourth generation, they shall come hither again. Mm -hmm. For the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. So at this point, the judgment, the, the sins of the Amorites had not reached to a point where they could be destroyed. So guess when they were going to be destroyed? In the fourth generation of Abraham's seed. So now let's go back. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 4 again. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 4. Read. After he had slain Sihon, the king of the Amorites, which dwelt in Heshbon, and Og, the king of Bashan, which dwelt at Ashtoreth, in a dream. So now, what we're reading here, when it says, after he had slain Sihon, king of the Amorites, guess what? This history right here, if you are studying, you will know what this is making reference to. Those of you brothers and sisters are not you are not studying, you have no idea what we are reading. Keep going, verse 5, come on. On this side, Jordan, in the land of Moab, began Moses to declare this law, saying, So in the land of what? On this side, Jordan, in the land of Moab. Come on. Began Moses to declare this law, saying. So now he says, in the land of Moab, because we had to go and conquer Moab. You understand? We had to go and conquer Moab. Now watch this. Keep reading. Verse 6. The Lord our God speak unto us in Horeb, saying, Ye have dwelt long enough in this mount. That's the same thing we just read in chapter 2. Go ahead. Turn you and take your journey and go to the Mount of the Amorites mm -hmm. and unto all the places nigh thereunto, in the plain, in the hills, and in the vale, in the valley. and in the south, in the valley, mm -hmm. and in the south, and by the seaside, to the land of the Canaanites, and unto Lebanon, unto the great river, the river Euphrates. Okay, so now the Lord is describing what? He's describing the promised land to us. Okay, go back. Give me that in Deuteronomy chapter 11. He's describing the promised land to us, the landmark of the promised land. Okay, Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 21. Let's start there. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 21. Mm -hmm. That your days may be multiplied, and the days of your children in the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give them as the days of heaven upon the earth. So the days of heaven, because that's going, that land mass is there, that's where the capital of the earth will be. Go ahead. For if ye shall diligently keep all these commandments, which I command you to do them, to love the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways and to cleave unto him. So now this is the stipulation right here. If you keep the commandments, this is what's going to happen. Jump down to verse 24. Verse 24. Every place whereon the soles of your feet shall tread shall be yours. From the wilderness and Lebanon, from the river, the river Euphrates, even unto the uttermost sea shall your coast be. So now what the Moses is saying, the same thing that we just read is the same thing that he's been explaining. He's explaining the landmark of the land of Israel. You understand? And this is the country that we must seek on a day-to-day -day basis. We must pray towards this land for the Lord to deliver us into the homeland and deliver us out of the hands of our enemies. Okay? Go back to Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 7 again. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Turn you and take your journey 
and go to the mount of the Amorites and unto all the places nigh thereunto, in the plain, in the hills, and in the valley, and in the south, and by the seaside, to the land of the Canaanites, and unto Lebanon, unto the great river, the river Euphrates. Come on. Behold, I have set the land before you. Go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give unto them and to their seed after them. So now I want you to notice something. You see verse 8? Verse 8 is a heavy verse right here. Okay, read that again. Verse, verse 8. Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 8. Go ahead. Behold, I have set the land before you. Go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give unto them and to their seed after them. So now the Lord is commanding us to listen, go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers. Remember, the most that God is the only one that can do that thing. Watch this. Give me the book. Give me the book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 37. Matthew 5, verse 37. Which the Lord swear unto your fathers. You understand? He swear the land unto our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give to them and to their seed after them. That's heavy like right this. Matthew 5, verse 37. See what you got? Matthew chapter 5, verse 37. Mm -hmm. But let your communication be, yea, yea, nay, nay, for whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. So now it's talking about us. This is a commandment regarding us. He says, let your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay. For whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. Meaning what? Don't swear. The angels can do it. The Lord can do it because the Moses is not going to break his word. You understand? So now what we're reading here is that what did the Lord do? The Lord made a promise to our forefathers to give them the land and to give to their seed after them. And guess what? The same message that was given to us back then in the wilderness is the same message that has been given to us this day in the land of our captivity. He says, go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give unto them and to their seed after them. Watch this. Give me, give me the book of Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4 real quick. Give me Romans 4, tell verse 1. Romans chapter 4, verse 1. What shall we say then? That Abraham, our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found. As pertaining to the flesh, hath found. Go ahead. For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. If Abraham was justified by works, but because Abraham had great faith. You understand? He had great faith, our forefather Abraham. Go ahead. For what said the scripture? Abraham believed God. He did what? And uh, Abraham believed God. So our forefather, he believed. He had, a, he had great faith, our forefather Abraham. Go ahead. Abraham believed God. And it was counted unto him for righteousness. It was counted unto him for righteousness. Watch this. Go ahead. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace. But of debt. But of what? But of debt. But of, of the promise that the Lord made to Abraham. The oath. Read. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly. Read. His faith is counted for righteousness. Go ahead. Even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man, unto whom God imputeth righteousness with a Without works. Let's talk about Abraham, our forefather Abraham. Go ahead. Saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Come on, who repent? See? Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. See? Cometh this blessedness then upon the circumcision only or upon the uncircumcision also? For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. Because Abraham performing the, the, the covenant of circumcision that was given to him was a seal of his faith. Read. 
how was it then reckoned when he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? So the Apostle Paul is asking the question, was he reckoned, you understand, in terms of his, his faith based on uncircumcision or in circumcision? He says, when was when he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? He was in uncircumcision. He was not circumcised. Okay, go ahead. Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. Next verse, go ahead. And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith, which he had yet being uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all them that believe. He might be what? That he might be the father of all them that believe. He might be the father of all them that believe. Go ahead. Though they be not circumcised, that righteousness might be imputed unto them also. That you see that thing? That righteousness, righteousness might be imputed unto them. Who's with them? Abraham seed. Go ahead. And the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, mm -hmm. which, which he had being yet uncircumcised Read. for the promise that he should be heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. It was not through the law. It was through the righteousness of faith and the oath that the Lord made unto our forefather Abraham and then to Isaac and Jacob and to his seed after them. Go ahead. For if they which are of the law be is, faith is made void, and the promise made of none effect. You see that thing? And the promise made of none effect. So regardless, we're still going to get the kingdom. Why? Because of the promise that the Lord made for forefather Abraham. You understand? So there's no such thing as the Lord is not dealing with the children of Israel anymore. Because that would mean, the promise that that would make the most high God alive. You understand? And the most high God, he swear unto our forefather Abraham. And guess what? The Lord will deliver on his promises. Go ahead. Because the law worketh wrath, for where no law is, there is no transgression. Where no law is, there is no transgression. That's what he's saying there is that where the, if there's no law, there's no transgression. You understand? Meaning what? Because you know, because the law was, was set out to get Negroes in check. But when we when we return, when the Lord brings us back into our original state, you're only going to know how to do good. That's it. The Lord will reset our spirit to go back to the days of old, how he made us in the spirit world. Okay, let's go back. Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 8. Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 8. Behold, I have set the land before you, Go in and possess the land which the Lord swore unto your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give unto them and to their seed after them. So now, if you've been reading, you know the oath that the Lord made with our forefather. He made with our forefather J uh, Isaac and our father Jacob. You know where to go to find those. Go ahead. Verse 9. And I speak unto you at that time, saying, I am not able to pay you myself alone. So now Moses is saying, listen, I told you at that time, I'm not able to, to bear you myself alone. Okay? Again, those that are studying, you know what this is talking about. Read verse 9 again. Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 9. Read. And I speak unto you at that time, saying, I am not able to pay you myself alone. Read. The Lord your God hath multiplied you. And behold, Ye are this day as the stars of heaven for multitude. He says, the Lord has multiplied you. You are this day as the stars of heaven for multitude. Go ahead. The Lord God of your fathers make you a thousand times so many, so many more as ye are, and bless you, and as he hath promised you. So now we became more. We became more upon the land because we, we became a nation in Egypt. And in Egypt, we had a, we had, we had fame. We were famous. We were many. We outnumbered them. Watch this. Give me Deuteronomy 26 verse 5. 
Deuteronomy chapter 26, verse 5. Go ahead. And thou shalt speak and say before the Lord thy God. Read. A Syrian ready to perish was my father. Come on. And he went down into Egypt and sojourned there with a few and became there a nation. And what? And became there a nation. And we became there a nation in Egypt. Go ahead. Great, mighty, and populous. You see that thing? We became, we became there a nation. We became great upon the land, mighty, and populous. Watch this. Give me the book of Ecclesiastes, verse 46. Okay, Sirach 46 and verse, verse 7. Ecclesiastes chapter 46, verse 7. Ecclesiastes chapter 46, verse 7. Read. In the time of Moses also, he did a work of mercy. He and Caleb, the son of Jephne. Jephne in that they withstood the congregation and withheld the people from sin and appeased the wicked memory. Read, because our people are complaining in the wilderness. Read on. And of 600,000 people on foot, they too were, pre were preserved to bring them into the heritage, even unto the land that floweth with milk and honey. So now, you see what the Lord is saying? It says 600,000 on foot, they too were preserved to what to bring them into the heritage, even unto the land that flows with milk and honey. So, this 600, when it says 600 people on foot, it's talking about these are the children now. Okay, you've got Caleb, you've got Joshua, then you've got who you've got the children, everybody else is dead. Okay, that's why it says they were brought into the heritage, even unto the land that flows with milk and honey. Okay, but in the wilderness, the Lord killed a lot of our forefathers. He and he killed all of them. That first generation was all got all put to death. Why? Because of murmuring and complaining. You understand? Watch this. Go back. Go back to uh, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter one and verse eleven again. Deuteronomy chapter one verse eleven. Read. The Lord God of your fathers make you a thousand times so many more as you are mm -hmm. and bless you as he has promised you. Now, remember, now, at this point, we're in the wilderness. What we read in Sirach is now those that was left, now they are put where? They are put into the land that the Lord promised unto our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay? So you need to go and find out how many people was they left Egypt. You know, if you don't know, ask your neighbor. Okay, go ahead. Verse 12. How can I myself alone bear your cumbrance and your burden and your strife? He says, how can I myself alone bear your cumbrance and your burden and your strife? So Moses is saying, how can I bear you alone? Watch this. Go ahead. Take you wise men and understanding and known among your tribes and I will make them rulers over you. So now he says, take you wise men and, under, and understand, meaning men that have wisdom, they are filled with understanding, and they are known among your tribes, and I will make them rulers over you. So now what is Moses doing? He's setting up a ranking system. You understand? So who gave Mo who came up with this idea to give Moses a ranking system? His, his what? His father-in-law, Jethro. Okay, go ahead. Verse 14. And he answered me and said, the thing which thou hast spoken is good for us to do. Now watch this. Hold on. Let me see something. Could you give me Exodus 18? Mm, I didn't think I was going to go here, but I'll go here. Exodus 18, verse 18. Let's start this. You know what? Start at verse 1. You're going to start at verse 1. You're gonna, I'm going to be jumping around a little bit in this chapter. Okay? Exodus 18, start at verse 1. Exodus chapter 18, verse 1. Read. When Jethro, the priest of Midian, Moses' father-in-law, heard of all that God had done for Moses and for Israel, his people, and that the Lord had brought Israel out of Egypt. The Lord does the Exodus. Now go ahead. Then Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, took Zip, Zipporah, Moses' wife, after he had sent her back. Because remember, Moses sent his wife back. Go ahead. And her two sons... 
of which the name of the one was Geshom, for he said, I have been an alien in a strange land. Ray. And the name of the other was Eliezer, for the God of my father, said he, was mine help, and delivered me from the sword of Pharaoh. So now jump down to verse three. Uh, keep reading. Read verse five. Verse five. And Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, came with his sons and his wife unto Moses into the wilderness, where he encamped at the Mount of God. What is the Mount of God? Mount Horeb, Mount Zion. So now, what we are reading here is what we read in Deuteronomy chapter one, verse one. Okay. So now Moses' father-in-law is bringing his wife and his, 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 two, his two children. Let's jump down to verse 13 now. Verse 13. And it came to pass on the morrow that Moses sat to judge the people. And the people stood by Moses from the morning unto the evening. So now, if you notice here, the people came to Moses to seek counsel, okay? It says, and the people stood by Moses from the morning unto the evening. So now you really have to think about it. Remember, go back to Deuteronomy 26, verse 5. Deuteronomy 26, verse 5. Mm -hmm. Deuteronomy chapter 26, verse 5. Read. And thou shalt speak and say before the Lord thy God, A Syrian ready to perish was my father. Come on. And he went down into Egypt, and sojourned there with a few, and became their nation. Great, mighty, and populous. So now it says we became a nation who we were great, mighty, and we were populous. Now give me Genesis, I mean Deuteronomy 1 verse 10 now. Deuteronomy 1 verse 10. Now we are in the wilderness. We are no longer in Egypt under Pharaoh. Now we are in the wilderness. Listen to what he says here. Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 10. Come on. The Lord God, the Lord your God hath multiplied you. And behold, Ye are, ye are this day as the stars of heaven for multitude. He says, ye are this day as the stars of heaven for multitude. Meaning what? You can't number us at this point. We are more now. You understand? Okay. Go back to Exodus 18. Verse 13 again. Exodus chapter 18 verse 13. Read. And it came to pass on the morrow that Moses said to judge the people. And the people stood by Moses from the morning until the evening. So now imagine the number of these people that are coming to Moses. You understand? We just read, it says, And the Lord your God has multiplied you, and behold, ye are this day as the stars of heaven for multitudes. Now they cannot be numbered. Okay, go ahead. And when Moses' father-in-law saw all that he did to the people, he said, What is this thing that thou doest to the people? Why sittest thou thyself alone, and all the people stand by thee from morning unto even? So what Moses was doing in verse 13, he was doing correctly. You understand? The problem is the way in which he was doing it. In terms of judging the people, yes, he was doing it. That was correct. There was nothing wrong with what he was doing. The problem is how he was doing it. Okay? Because now, now it's not, it's not effective what he's doing. Although he's judging the people, giving them counsel, but he's not effective. Next part of the verse. Go ahead. Verse 15. And Moses said unto his father-in-law, Because the people came to me to inquire of God. Read. When they have a matter, they come unto me, and I judge between one and another, and I do make them know the statutes of God and his laws. Read. Verse 17. And Moses' father-in-law said unto him, the thing that thou doest is not good. Mm -hmm. Thou wilt surely wear away, both thou and this people that is with thee. For this thing is too heavy for thee. Thou art not able to perform it thyself alone. So now Moses' father-in-law is watching this. Day. This this thing is not going to work out in the long run. Okay. So now watch this. Keep going. Hearken now unto my voice. I will give thee counsel, and God shall be with thee. Read. Be thou for the people, be thou for the people to Godward, that thou mayest bring the causes unto God. Okay, come on. 
and thou shalt teach them ordinances and laws. Thou shalt what? And, shall sh and thou shalt teach them ordinances and laws. He says, you shall teach them ordinances and laws. Go ahead. And thou shalt teach them ordinances and laws, and shalt show them the way wherein they must walk. Read. And the work that they must do. And the work that they must do. Go ahead. Come on. Moreover, thou shalt provide out of all the people able men. Stop right there. Such he says what? Moreover, thou shalt provide out of all the people able men. Thou shalt provide out of all the people able men. Now, you see this part right? This is a heavy stuff right here. He says thou shalt provide out of the people able men. Now, here's the thing. Keep going. Let me uh, delve into this. Keep going. Verse 21 again. Exodus chapter 18, verse 21. Come on. Moreover, thou shalt provide out of all the people, able men, such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetousness, and place such over them to be rulers of thousands and rulers of hundreds and rulers of fifties and rulers of tens. Stop right there. Now, you see that part there? It says, this is the qualities now. It says, able men, such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetousness, and place such over them to be rulers over thousands, rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. Now, you really have to, you have to sit down really to picture this thing, because the Lord is going to send my multitude into the camp. He's coming. Now, what you want to notice here is that it is able men, such as fear God, men of truth, they can come to this. Watch this. Give me the book of Second Samuel, chapter 23, verse 4. Second, start at verse 3. Second Samuel 23, verse 3. Second Samuel, chapter 23, verse 3. Go ahead. The God of Israel said, the rock of Israel spake to me. Mm -hmm. He that ruleth over men must be just, ruling in the fear of God. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, he that ruleth over men must be just, ruling in the fear of God. Ruling in the fear of God. You must be just. Give me that in Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 5. Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 5. Read. But if a man be just, and do that which is lawful and right. You see that thing? If a man be just and do that which is lawful and right, in order for you to do that which is lawful and right, guess what you have to be doing? You have to go into the scriptures to seek where the law is found and read it and apply it. There's no way you're just going to be just by osmosis. That's not going to happen. You have to, come, you have to go into the scriptures and study, consistently study. You understand? You do four chapters minimum. So, in order for you to be able to judge the people with just judgment, it's not going to happen if you don't study this book. It's not going to happen if you don't study the scriptures. And you brothers, you say you want to be leaders, guess what? A lot of you, you are not ready. A lot of you, this place is a place to hang out. A lot of you, you don't take this seriously as you're supposed to. Okay? Listen, there's a lot, there's a lot of changes that are coming. So, I need you men to understand this thing. Because a lot of you are in La La Land. You think this is a, you know, you, 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 you have a shy, you push it cut. No, no, this is not the place to push it small world. That's not the place for it. Okay? We are at war. I need able men, as the Lord is saying here. Able men. Okay? Such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetousness. Rulers of, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens, of thousands. So, guess what? Go back to 2 Samuel 23, verse 3 again. 2 Samuel chapter 23, verse 3. Read. Really? The God of Israel said, The rock of Israel speaks to me. He that ruleth over men must be just, ruling in the fear of God. You see what the Lord is saying? He that ruleth over men must be just, meaning what? You must do that which is lawful and right. Do according to the script, as it is written. Ruling in the fear of God. Next verse. Watch this. And he shall be as the light of the morning. When the sun riseth, even a morning without clouds, mm -hmm. as the tender grass springing out of the earth by clear shining 
by clear shining of the rain. Meaning what? The Lord says, I'm going to put wisdom and understanding upon your spirit. I'm going to put wisdom and knowledge and understanding upon your spirit. Okay, watch this. Hmm. Go back. Exodus 18. Exodus 18, verse 21 again. Exodus chapter 18, verse 21. Read. Moreover, thou shalt provide out of all the people able men, such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetousness, and place such over them to be rulers of thousands and rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. Come on. And let them judge the people at all seasons. And it shall be that Hold every on. great mess. It says, let them what? And let them judge the people at all seasons. Let them judge the people at all seasons. Watch this. Give me Second Timothy 4, verse 2. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. Let them judge the people at all seasons. Watch this. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. Mm -hmm. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Mm -hmm. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. You see what the Lord is saying? It says, instant in season, out of season. Whether they're going to want to hear it or not. Whether it's your friend or not. Whether you grew up together, you're going to judge the people in season, out of season. You're not gonna watch, you're not gonna be partial when you make the judgment. That's why a lot of you are not a lot of all of you are not ready for this stuff. Okay, you're not ready. You are not ready to be leaders yet. Because a lot of you, you are still operating like you are still sucking on your mother's bread. Teacher is straight up. Okay. We are at war. You brothers don't study. You just like it when you are out there be pulling precepts that you don't even understand the history behind the precepts. This is to train you. But behind that, the, the idea is you sit down and study. Okay? Let me calm down. Go back to Exodus 18, verse 22. Exodus chapter 18, verse 22. Read. And let them judge the people at all seasons. And it shall be that every great matter they shall bring unto thee, but every small matter they shall judge. So it shall be easier for thyself, and they shall bear the burden with thee. They shall what? And they shall bear the burden with thee. You see what the Lord is saying? The reason why I'm setting up a ranking system is so that you brothers can bear this burden with me, because this is not an easy job. You understand? And this is how our forefathers did things. They delegated for what? Brothers to have the spirit of the Lord to be able to judge matters. How are you going to be able to, how are you going to be a judge but you don't know the law? Because if you don't apply the law, you're not going to know what the law says. Okay? So what we're reading here is saying, and let them judge the people at all seasons, in season and out of season. It shall be that every great matter they shall bring unto you. For you to bring the matter unto me, that means you have sat down to hear the causes between your brothers and sisters and say, okay, this matter is too heavy. Let me push it up the chain. You see what I'm saying? So it says, for thyself, it says, um, they shall bring up to thee, but every small matter they shall judge. So shall it be easier for thyself, and they shall bear the burden with thee. A lot of you don't understand this. A lot of you, you are not studying. And when you do study, you don't study, you just read because you just want to finish up. Okay? Not realize you must put yourself in this book. I don't know how many times I keep saying this. Put yourself in this Bible when you are studying. This is you. You are reading about yourself, your auntie, your uncle, your grandmothers and your grandfathers. But you are still, you have the book, your fringes, but you still have white Jesus in your head. White Jesus is still in your head. Because you're moving like you are in the spirit of white Jesus. Okay? Go back to Deuteronomy chapter 1. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 15 again. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 15. Okay. So I took the, sh the chief of your tribes, wise men, and known, and made them heads over you, captains over thousands, and captains over hundreds, and captains over fifties, and captains over tens, 
and officers among your tribes. Come on. And I charged your judges at that time, saying, Hear the causes between your brethren, and judge righteously between every man and his brother, and the stranger that is that is with him. Now, this is a ranking system. Jethro, the Lord put the spirit upon uh, Moses' father-in-law to help Moses to implement this thing. Now this is implemented. The ranking system is implemented. Now it's time for brothers to ascend into it. And you're not going to be given rank if, guess what? If you don't, if you don't study. Okay? And there's things I'm picking up which I despise with my whole heart. Okay? Watch this. Hold this. Give me the book of Isaiah chapter 1 verse 26. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 26. Because this right here, what we're about to read, this is what the Lord is forging us into. Okay? Isaiah chapter 1 verse 26. And I will restore thy judges as at the first, and thy counselors as at the beginning. Afterward, thou shalt be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. So what you are seeing is that I will restore thy judges as at the first. That's what we are just read in Deuteronomy 1. The Lord says, I'm going to restore thy judges as at the first, and thy counselors as at the beginning. Afterward, afterward, you understand? The afterward is going to happen. The only time when the afterward will happen is when the Lord does this. Restoration of the judges, you understand, and counselors. These judges, what are they going to do? They're going to set the people in order. According to the scriptures, men will be set in order, women will be set in order, the whole nation will be set in order, because the Lord will restore unto us the judges of old, the counselors of old. He says, after what, go ahead. Afterward, thou shalt be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. Because right now, the notion is the nations are not calling us that. The nations are not calling us the city of righteousness, they are not calling us the, faith, the faithful city. They are calling us niggers and kafirs. That's what they call us. So you mean to tell me, when you don't study, when I see you men don't study, I'm dealing with the men now. When I see you men don't study, you are lazy, you make excuses about everything, you don't care about your people. You will hate your nation. I'm going to tell you straight, you don't love your nation. You hate your people, and you like it when we're in captivity. You are okay with it. You are okay with us in captivity, struggling like this. But you say you are an Israelite, you love the Lord. You don't love the Lord. If you love the Lord, you will sit down and open this book and study. And ask questions. Why? Because you are concerned about the state of your nation. We're in the state of emergency. Brother still, still sucking on lollipops. Chewing, chewing gum. Because you don't take this seriously. Okay? You don't take it seriously as you say you will as you convince yourself that you do. So it's just cool to be an Israelite. No, this is not a place for it. There's Christian churches at every corner. Go there. Why be here? Okay? Go back to where was that now. Keep reading. Read the next verse. Zion shall be redeemed with judgment and her converts with righteousness. You see that thing? Her converts with righteousness. Who's the convert with who, who's going to be converted with righteousness? That's us, the 12 tribes of Islam. As we repent, come into our order and do that which the Bible is saying. Okay, every day we have class. Okay, we have classes on a daily. Brothers be taking notes on a daily basis, but you don't study the stuff. The notes just be sitting there, just piling up. The notes are just piling up. Okay. The notes are gathering dust because brothers don't be studying. Okay, go back to Deuteronomy chapter one. Deuteronomy chapter one and verse verse sixteen again. Deuteronomy chapter one verse sixteen. And I charged your judges at that time, saying, "Hear the causes between your brethren, and judge righteously." between every man and his brother and the stranger that is with him. Read. Ye shall not respect persons in judgment, but ye shall hear the small as well as the great. Ye shall not be afraid of the face of man, 
for the judgment is God's. Mm. And the cause that is too hard for you, bring it unto me and I will hear it. That's the same thing. That's the same thing we just read. You understand? The same thing we read in Exodus 18. The same thing. So Moses says, you shall not respect the person in judgment, but you shall hear the small as well as the great. The small matters and great matters. He says, you, not, you shall not be afraid of the face of man. You know what this is talking about? It's talking about you brothers that are stubborn. You understand? You'll be told the same thing over and over. You don't correct it. And guess what? A lot of you have talked to you about the same thing over and over. And it just keeps coming up because you don't correct it. Guess what? The day when the Lord decides, you know what? I'm sick of this guy. Guess what's going to happen? None of us are going to be able to do anything about it. And on that day, you'll be begging for mercy and the Lord not going to hear it. On that day. To whom much is given, much is required. Okay? Next verse. And I commanded you at that time all the things which which ye should do. Now watch this. Now I want to show you something. I want to show you something here. Give me the book. Hmm. Give me the book of um, give me Second Samuel 24, verse 1. Second Samuel chapter 24, that verse 1. Second Samuel chapter 24, verse 1. Read. And again the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. And he moved David against them to say, Go, number Israel and Judah. So he's telling David, so the spirit of the Lord, meaning what? Satan, the evil spirit that the Lord sent, he sent this evil spirit to David to do what? To number Israel. He says, go, number Israel and Judah. Now watch this. Because he's not supposed to do that. Okay, he's not supposed to be numbering Israel. The people that were given the authority to number Israel was the Levites. If you read the book of Leviticus, if you read the book of Numbers, you will know what I'm talking about. Okay? So the Levites are the ones that are allowed to number Israel. Okay? So now David is doing it. Watch this. Give me Second Chronicles now. Now give me First Chronicles 21 verse 1. First Chronicles 21 verse 1. First Chronicles 21 verse 1. And Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. You see what you see who, who provoked David? The Satan did that. The Lord allowed Satan to provoke David, King David, to number Israel. Okay, now watch this. Go back to 2 Samuel 24, verse 1 again. 2 Samuel chapter 24, verse 1. And again, the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. And he moved David against him to say, Go, number Israel and Judah. Now jump down to verse 10. Watch this. Now, you can read the whole history on your own here. But what's going to happen is David is going to now, the, 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 his mind is going to return back. His spirit is going to come back. He's going to realize what I've done. Listen, I've made a grave mistake. Okay, come on. Verse 10. Verse 10. And David's heart smote him. After that, he had numbered the people. And David said unto the Lord, I have sinned greatly in that I have done. And now I beseech thee, O Lord, take away the iniquity of thy servant, for I have done very foolishly. So now you see David is begging the Lord now. He says, I've done very foolishly, but the Lord wanted that to happen because the Lord was angry with Israel. Now watch this. Jump down. Keep going. Read verse 11. Verse 11. For when David was up in the morning, the word of the Lord came unto the prophet Gad, David's seer, saying, Wait. Go and say unto David, Thus saith the Lord, I offer, thee, I offer thee three things. Choose thee one of them, that I may do it unto thee. So now the Lord is using the prophet Gad, because David had two prophets that were, that were counseling him. Gad and Nathan. Okay? So now... The word of the Lord is coming through the prophet Gad to tell David, listen, choose the three things the Lord is saying, and whichever one you choose is the one that I'm going to use to judge Israel with. Next verse. Go ahead. So Gad came to David and told him, and said unto him, Shall seven years of famine come unto thee in thy land? Or wilt thou flee three months before thine enemies? 
while they pursue thee, or that there be three days of pestilence in thy land. Now advise and see what answer I shall return to him that sent me. So now watch this. Now the Lord is giving you three options. It says seven years of famine, three months on the run, or three days of pestilence. Okay, watch this. Come on. And David said unto Gad, I am in great I am in great strait. Meaning, meaning what? It says, listen, I'm be, I'm sitting between like you know a rock and a hard place. You are putting me in a corner here. Okay. He says, I am in great strait. He's saying, go ahead. Let us fall now into the hand of the Lord, for his mercies are great, and let me not fall into the hand of man. Next verse. Go ahead. So the Lord sent a pestilence upon Israel from the morning even to the time appointed. Read verse 15 again. Second Samuel chapter 24, verse 15. So the Lord sent a pestilence upon Israel from the morning even to the time appointed. So now, and there died of the people. So it says, even unto the time appointed. The time appointed is what? Three days. So he chose the pestilence instead. So uh, rather the pestilence for three days, okay? Instead of three, three months on the run, David is, is waxing old, you understand? And seven years of famine. He said, listen, the pestilence is the better choice for three days. Go ahead. And there died of the people from Dan, even to Beersheba, 70,000 men. So 70,000 men died because of this pestilence that the Lord sent. Okay, come on. And when the angel stretched out his hand upon Jerusalem to destroy it, the Lord repented him of the evil and said to the angel that destroyed the people, it is enough. Stay now thine hand. And the angel of the Lord was by the threshing place of Arona, the Jebusite. So now what you are seeing here is that the Lord is using the angel of the angel, the evil angel, to come down to take out his sword and point it toward Jerusalem to bring forth death and destruction upon them using what? A pestilence, a plague. Okay, come on. Verse 17. And David spake unto the Lord when he saw the angel that smote the people. And said, Lo, I have sinned and I have done wickedly. But these sheep, what have they done? Let thine hand, I pray thee, be against me and against my father's house. So now David is, is you see, David saw the angel that smote the people. We can see that today. But the Lord allowed David to see the angel that was causing the death and destruction on, the, on, on Israel. Okay? So what, what, I want to, what I want you to see here is that. The Lord was angry with Israel. And when the Lord was angry with Israel, he, saw, he sent a pestilence against them. He used the angel to do it. You understand? Now jump down to verse 21. Watch this. Verse 21. And Arona said, Wherefore is my Lord the king come to his servant? And David said, To buy the threshing floor of thee, to build an altar unto the Lord, that the plague may be stayed from the people. Now read that part again. To do what? To buy the threshing floor of thee, to build an altar unto the Lord, that the plague may be stayed from the people. So now what David is doing is say, listen, I need to build an altar unto the Lord, that the plague may be stayed from the people. So guess what? So David had to build an altar in order for the Most High God to say, okay, it's enough now. Don't kill them. Don't, don't continue to kill them. David had to do this. You see, we see the mindset of our forefather, King David. This is where his mindset was. He was like, what's the problem? We need to fix it. He had the spirit of agency on him. He had the sense of agency because he understood if this doesn't happen, the Lord will continue to destroy and plague us. Okay? Now watch this. Jump down to verse 25 now. 25. And David built there an altar unto the Lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. So the Lord was entreated for the land and the plague was stayed from Israel. You see what you see what's going on here? So what did the Most High do? The Most High was upset, was angry with Israel because guess what? The, we was not right. We wasn't in the right spirit. So the Lord said, okay, I'm going to bring, I'm going to send my angel down there and he's going to be causing havoc. Negroes are going to drop dead. Now we have the coronavirus. What is the reason for it? Read verse 21 again. And Arona said, 
Wherefore is my Lord the king come to his servant? And David said, to buy the threshing floor of thee, to build an altar unto the Lord, that the plague may be stayed from the so, people. So now, when I see brothers be just be dragging their feet, see brothers just be lazy making excuses, you don't study, guess what? This you are the, you are you are part of part of the reason why this is happening is because men don't want to stand up and get the work done. They just be dragging their feet. You don't study, you don't prepare for war, you don't sit down and actually go into this book. A lot of you, you just you're just in love with yourself. You love the way you look, you're always in front of the mirror like a woman. You that's all you care about. You don't care about the scriptures. What is written in this book to apply it? To deliver our people out of captivity. So now look what the Lord is doing now. That means the angel is the sword is still out. Because now we look at the corona numbers now, they are going up. We're on level three. The numbers are every day, the numbers they just keep doubling. Who's doing the Lord is doing this thing? Why? Give me Haggai one verse two. Haggai chapter one. You see what David did? David, you said, you know what? We need to, I need to build an altar. You understand? Nothing big like my son is going to do it in the future. But I need to do something so I can pacify. Watch this. So that we can pacify the rest, the Lord, the, the rest of the Lord upon the people. Watch this. Give me that in um, Haggai chapter 1, verse 2. The book of Haggai chapter 1, verse 2. Read. Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, These people say, The time is not come. The time that the Lord's house should be built. You see that the mindset of the people now. Remember what David did. David said, listen, I need to build an altar so we can sacrifice peace offerings and burnt offerings so that the plague may be saved from Israel. Read that again, verse 2. The book of Haggai, chapter 1, verse 2. Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, These people say, the time is not come. The time that the Lord's house should be built. He said that, no, it's not the time yet. I'm not ready. Okay. Yeah, I know. I have this to do. I have that to do. The time is not come. No, meaning the Lord, I'm not going to give him priority. I'm just going to pri prioritize my own life. That's what I care about. Read that again, verse 2. The book of Haggai, chapter 1, verse 2. Praise. Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, These people say, the time is not come. The time that the Lord's house should be built. Meaning they are making excuses why we cannot build, why we cannot study, why you cannot put a simple timetable together to study because you understand the emergency situation we are in. But guess what? You just keep putting it off from day to day because, no, I do it in the next hour. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it at night. I'll do it in the morning. It's always the next time. What about the time that you have now? Because why? Because you think that, you see what the Lord says, that speaketh the law. Not the prophet, the Lord. So the Lord is using the prophet to relay the message to us. That's because the Lord of hosts say, these people say that time is not come, that the time that the, the, the time is not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Meaning what? Nah, you know, I, I don't see that. You understand? I'll do tomorrow. Excuses. Okay? The most I got on one day. We are almost out of here. We are in the 11th hour, by the way. Some of you are asleep. We are, you know how many classes we keep coming? They've been brought up about the end of the world, about what's coming, what we need to do to prepare for the second coming. We went, we do the law, we do the prophecy, we press it, we do the history. It don't matter. Brothers don't study. They don't study. Okay? Because what you look to me here is that the Lord had to lay the, the, the spirit of the prophet Haggai. He said, listen, I know you're not up in, you're not up like these brothers, but listen, go down there and get on these men of Israel. The Lord, he raised the prophet Haggai and said, go down there and cause trouble. You understand? Make them mad. That's what the Lord did. Now jump down to verse 4. Haggai chapter 1 verse 4. Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses and this house lie waste. You see what he's saying? Is it time for you to be sitting in your comfortable? You are comfortable, everything is good in your life. While the house of the Lord lie waste. The house of the Lord is the 12 tribes of Israel, the so called black, Latino, the Native American Indians. That's the house of Israel. He said, While the house of the Lord lie waste, the house of the Lord is lying waste right now. 
and brothers be chewing gum. Okay, read. Now, therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. The Lord is saying, examine yourself. Get your act together. That's what he's saying. Read. This is a warning, by the way. Come on. Ye have so much and bring little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earned wages and as wages to put into a bag with holes. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, whatever you do, everything in your life, there's going to be decrease in your life. Why? Because you're not putting me in the top. You're not prioritizing the work that I've called you to do. So guess what? In your life, there's going to be lack. In your life, there's going to be decrease, the Lord is saying. That's what the Lord was, was he was getting on Israel. Because Israel is full of BS. You understand? We are in the state of emergency, and guess what? Brothers are still moving. They are still in la la land. You still want to be part of the world. You are still concerned about the garbage that is happening in the world while we are at war. Okay? We don't have time for BS. Okay? We are at war. There's a lot of our people, a lot of our people, they need this truth. Brothers are still busy, dragging their feet. You don't study. That thing really pisses me the hell off. That brothers don't want to study. Okay? But yet you say you want to be a soldier. You want to enlist in one of the greatest military programs on this earth. God's army. And guess what? You don't study. You don't want to learn your soul. How are you going to fight out there? Okay? We are at war. That's why I told you, brothers, sir, we are not ready for a multitude yet. Okay? Because brothers be playing games up in here. Okay? Now look what the Lord is doing on this earth. The Lord is plaguing Israel. The majority of the people that are dying from COVID-19 is our people. The same thing that happened back then is happening today. Why? Because, read verse 7 again. Haggai chapter 1 verse 7. Thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Consider your ways. The Lord is saying, meaning examine yourself, get it together. Okay, that's what the most High God is saying, to get it together because you are asleep. You understand? That's why, that's why, this is the reason why you see a lot of you brothers, your mind is not correct. Okay, everything is a joke to you. Everything is play, play with you. Why? Because you don't take this serious. You know why you don't take this serious? Because you don't study. You don't actually study the law. You don't study the first five books. To see what was going on in the wilderness. What was the Lord doing? How our forefathers was moving? That's why you don't have that sense of agency because you don't study. You don't get it. But if you sit in this book and open this Bible and say, you know what? I'm going to study every day I'm going to study. I'm going to make sure that I commit myself to four chapters minimum. That's the minimum, by the way. So the more you do, you start to realize, wait a minute. Then your spirit starts to change. Your spirit starts to see things and say, you know what? Listen, I need to stop being a nigger. I need to stop that. So that's why right now I have no patience anymore for this stuff. No. I don't have no patience no more about this stuff. Why? Because I'm seeing really how you brothers are moving. You are a waste of time. A lot of you, you are a waste of time. You don't, you're not here for the right reason. You are here because you're just going to hear people playing games. We don't have time for games. We are at war. How many times do I get to say this? We are at war. Okay? Go back to Deuteronomy chapter 1. Deuteronomy chapter 1. Read yes, verse sir. 18 again. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 18. And I commanded you at that time all the things which he should do. Read. And when we departed from Horeb, we went through all that great and terrible wilderness, which he saw by the way of the mountain of the Amorites, as the Lord our God commanded us, and we came to Kadesh Barnea. Read. And I said unto you, ye are come unto the mountain of the Amorites, which the Lord our God does give unto us. Read. Behold, the Lord thy God hath set the land before thee, Go up and possess it, 
as the Lord God of thy fathers had said unto thee, fear not, neither be discouraged. You see what the Lord is commanding us right there? It says, listen, the land is set before you. Go over there and possess the land. That is what he's saying. He said it before back then, when he was in the wilderness with Moses, he's saying it again today in captivity. The land of Israel was given to our forefathers thousands and thousands of years ago already. So how are we going to get over there? We need to keep the laws of God in the land of our captivity. Read again verse 21. Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 21. Behold, the Lord thy God had set the land before thee. Go up and possess it, as the Lord God of thy fathers had said unto thee, fear not, neither be discouraged. You see what he's saying? He says, fear not, fear not, neither be discouraged. Why? All this, give me the book of Numbers, because those of you that are studying, you know what is written. Numbers 32. Okay, Numbers 32. Let's start at verse 1. Because there was some evil stuff that was going on at this point. Israel didn't want to go over there and get the land. Because at this point, we're in the wilderness, we need to get inheritance of land. But you had some tribes that were not, they were not in the right spirit. The same spirit that was giving Moses hell is the same spirit that was giving Joshua hell. Joshua had to get on Israel. And guess what Joshua was doing? When Israel was out of order, Joshua was killing them. That's what Joshua was doing in the wilderness. When Israel was out of order, he didn't negotiate, he didn't listen. He put Negro to death with a sword. That's what Joshua did. Okay? Read it. Numbers 32 verse 1. The book of Numbers chapter 32 verse 1. Now the children of Reuben and the children of Gad had a very great multitude of cattle. And when they saw the land of Jazer and the land of Gilead, that behold, the place was a place for cattle. Now this is Gad and Reuben now. Okay? They had a lot of cattle. Come on. The children of Gad and the children of Reuben came and spake unto Moses and to Eleazar the priest and unto the princes of the congregation, saying, Ataroth and Tibon and Jaza and, and Heshbon and Eliele and Shebam and Nebo, Yod, really? even the country which the Lord smote before the congregation of Israel is a land for cattle, and thy servants have cattle. So now Gad and Reuben had a lot of cattle, so they didn't want to go and help the rest of the tribes get the land. They didn't want to go over. Okay, come on. Wherefore, said they, if we have found grace in thy sight, let this land be given unto thy servants for your possession and bring us not over Jordan. So they didn't want to cross Jordan. They didn't want to go over Jordan to help the rest of their brothers to get the land that the Lord gave to them already. He says, yes, there's people over there, but the land is yours. Go and take it, because I'm behind you. Read. And Moses said unto the children of Gad and to the children of Reuben, shall your brethren go to war and shall he sit here? You see that thing right there? So here's another thing, because you might think, no, but I go to camp. No, 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 no. He says, shall your brothers go to war, shall you sit here? Listen, you physically going to camp, it doesn't mean that you are war ready. You teaching at camp, it does not mean you are worried. You are not worried. You are not worried. Because a lot of you, you like it when you be pulling presets and all. You are not worried. Why? Because guess what? He says, shall your brothers go to war? And shall you sit there? You really need to sit down and think about it. Sir. What does it mean to go to war? You cannot go to war if you don't get yourself, you don't train for the war. Because by a lot of you, you are still in your carnal mind, you see. You are still thinking carnally. This is a spiritual fight. This is a spiritual war right here. This is not a physical fight. It's a spiritual war. So you need to come with the spirit of the Lord to be able to make sure that you can what? You can war out there. And that preparation begins with you when you sit down and study. That's how you prepare for this spiritual war. Let me say it because Israel is slow and dumb and deaf and blind. That's the problem with Israel. It doesn't matter how many scriptures will bring out one year after us. For you to be war ready, you need to sit down and study this book. This is your weapon of war, but you neglect it every day. You don't want to touch it, you don't want to open it. You only, you show up on, you show up for last thing, but you still don't go over your nose like you take in class. That don't make no sense. They're not just be piling up, but you don't go over the nose. 
You don't go over these notes. So what what what's the use of you sitting down taking notes during class, but you don't apply? You don't sit down and study. How do you sharpen your spirit? How do you make sure that you prepare against the evils that are coming? You won't. Okay? Because it's a place to hang out. You don't think about this is a military program. Okay? This is God's military. The greatest elite military program on earth. The army of the Lord. God's army. That's what we are forging here in the spirit of Christ. Okay? When the Lord returns, there's no, I didn't know. No. You had the Bible with you the whole time, but you didn't study it. So on that day, you are who you are. But some of you, you are, guess, guess what? You're just playing with this great period. Like, that's why I said, you are still in, moving in the spirit of Christianity. The Christian journey, I've got great. I've got great. So I'm going to do nothing. You don't remember, you can pull a precept in Titus 2 and say, it's great teaches us to deny godliness. But you are playing with this grace that you say you know what it's about. That's why I'm saying Israel is crazy. Israel is bad up. Okay? Read that verse again. Numbers chapter 32, verse 6. And Moses said unto the children of Gad and to the children of Reuben, Shall your brethren go to war and shall he sit here? Go ahead. And wherefore, discourage ye the heart of the children of Israel from going over into the land which the Lord has given them? You see what the Lord is saying right there? Because this whole thing is spiritual. Because I know those who study, I know those who don't. And I can tell. I can tell who studies and I can tell who does not. I'm not getting on the sisters because I have sisters, they've got issues. I'm dealing with you men. I know who studies. Listen, one, you know what I've noticed also? I've noticed brothers when they realize that they are behind, they be just be posting a lot of questions just to try to confuse you. Because you think you can go. I can see through the BS. Mm, this one is just trying to make it seem like they're studying. I can see that. Okay. Now you be you be reading, right? So you cannot be sending me questions regarding eight chapters. That's crazy. Now, because you are trying to catch up. I get it as you are reading, you come up with questions. You say, mm, okay, chapter one, let me do a summary. Because a lot of you don't do that. You don't do a summary of the chapters you read. You just you just ready to move on to the next one. So that you can say, okay, I did my four chapters now. Close the Bible. To help with the book. Let me do my own thing now. That's the mindset with a lot of you. It's like something you tick on a paper. Mm, I did four chapters today. And... Guess what? When the Bible closed, you forget everything that you've learned. You don't remember nothing. Because your spirit is not in this. Okay? You are not here. You are somewhere else. I'm not begging nobody to be here. I'm not going to beg you to be here. I'll pray for the laborers that the Lord will send up in here. And the Lord will send laborers into this vineyard. Understand that. With or without you, the mission is a go. We're going to get this work done. We want to go home. Tired of being enslaved. Okay? Tired of looking at Esau's dumb and stupid face. I don't want to see the white man's face no more. I don't want to see the Arab's face no more. Except in the kingdom. Okay? But a lot of you, that's not your thinking. You don't move like that. We want to get up out of here. That's why we have to do the work. Study to show yourself approved unto the Lord. We have got work to do. Now we're supposed to spread out. How are we going to spread out when you brothers are being simple? How can you spread out when you are... I'll not spread nobody. Because you are still simping. I need you men to study. Okay? Go back to Deuteronomy 1, verse 22. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 22. And he came near unto me, every one of you, and said... We will send men before us, and they shall search us out the land and bring us word again by what way we must go up and into what cities we shall come. Okay, that's in the book of Numbers. Go ahead. And the saying pleased me well, and I took 12 men of you, one of a tribe. And they turned and went up into the mountain and came unto the valley of Eshcol and searched it out. Wait. 
And they took off the fruit of the land in their hands and brought it down unto us and brought us word again and said, it is a good land which the Lord our God does give us. That good land is talking about the land of Israel, the land that flows with milk and honey, which is the glory of all land. Go ahead. Notwithstanding, you would not go up, but rebelled against the commandment of the Lord your God. Read. And you murmured in your tents and said, because the Lord hated us, he hath brought us forth out of the land of Egypt to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us. Now watch this. You see verse 27? Verse 27 is a heavy, heavy verse. Read verse 27 again. Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 27. Read. And you murmured in your tents and said, because the Lord hated us, he hath brought us forth out of the land of Egypt to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us. Because you know what? I'm going to show you really how 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 demonic the Negro mind is. You see this verse right here. It says, "He murmured in your tent, meaning complaining. You understand, speaking evil, and said, because the Lord hated us. The Lord just delivered us from the hand of Pharaoh, from from captivity, right? It says, He has brought us forth out of the land of Egypt, okay, to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us." You already forgot. You, if you are mentioning it, saying, listen, the Lord delivered us out of Egypt. Now the Lord is saying, okay, go and destroy the Amorites and take the land. Now you are saying, no, the Lord delivered you out of Egypt just so the Amorites can, be, can destroy you. Like you making the most high to be a schizophrenic. Okay? Now, let's bring it to today because when we leave it right there, the Negro is not going to wake up. Think about it. A lot of you, the way you think is that you are stuck between a, a rock and a hard place. Meaning what? You are in this truth. The Lord has woken you up now. Now that you know you, now you know you are Israel and what is required of you. You know the will of the Father. What is needed for us to get out of here? Now guess what needs to happen? We need to labor to get the kingdom. Okay? Now at the same time, you understand we need to labor. We need to sit down and study. Okay? Then you're also thinking, you know what? When I look at the work that needs to be done, when I look at the fact that I actually have to sit down and study this book and I don't want that, here's the thing. You, you are here, you, you don't want to study, but at the same time, it's cool to be an Israelite, but guess what? Your mind is, not, is out there. At the same time, you are regretting, it's like, Ish, I wish I didn't know this. I wish I didn't know this. At least I'll still be in my ignorance. I wouldn't really know what's going on. So it's like it's a bitter sweet. It's bitter sweet. On one end, you know you're Israel. There's the bitterness is the fact that now you have to sit down and study one. Two, you have to examine yourself, get rid of your evil, get rid of your hang ups, get rid of the sins, the last that you are dealing with. That's work, that's labor. And that's a daily thing. 24 hours a day, you have to be in the study. And that takes work, that takes discipline, that takes rehearsal. A lot of you don't want to do that. You want the benefits, but you don't want to work to get those benefits. So now you are stuck. You are stuck. It's like when we go to camp, you see, you see brothers and sisters, they be listening. And a lot of them, you see, they want to leave, but they can't. It's like they are glued to the, to the floor. They can't move. Because the Lord is like, I'm going to make you sure that you hear this. And yes, you want to go, but you can't. The word is keeping you here. By the time you leave, now the Lord is, uh, now you are thinking to yourself, you know what? I wish I didn't stop. Why did they stop there? And now, guess what? Those people out there that are not in this truth yet, but they've heard it, you are, the, you are moving the, in the same spirit that they are. It was good to hear it, but I wish I didn't pass there. Now, I'm required to do something about this, and I don't really want that. That's a lot of you. Some of you, not a lot, some of you, you move like this. Some of you are like this. Right now, yeah, like that brother or sister that comes to camp is like the Lord has is, is, is nailed them to the floor, to the ground. They can't move. Some of you, that's you. Now, that's heavy right there. Read verse 27 again. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 27. And you murmured in your tents and said, because the Lord hated us, he had brought us forth out of the land of Egypt 
to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us. Three. Whither shall we go up? Our brethren have discouraged our heart, saying, and taller than we. The cities are great and walled up to heaven. And moreover, we have seen the sons of the Anakims there. The giants, meaning what? These are the these are Hamites. Okay. So now we were delivered out of Pharaoh. That kingdom was greater than the kingdom of the, 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 the nation of the Anakim. The Lord delivered out of the Pharaoh, the giants. Formidable and powerful kingdom. The Lord delivered us out and laid the Egyptians to wait. Now, here we are. We're supposed to now conquer the Amorites. We can't. The people are taller than us. You can make this stuff up. Go ahead. Then I said unto you, dread not, neither be afraid of them. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, don't be afraid of them. Don't be afraid of these nations. Go out there and war. Doesn't matter what happens to you. Go to do the work. But before you go out there and prepare yourself to go out there, because a lot of you, you just like to be seen out there. You don't really sit down and prepare. It's just, it's cool to be out there to be teaching. That's all you think, that's what is in your mind. You don't really understand why you are here. It's just cool to be out there. You wanted to be somebody, now you are in the world, you are in the truth. Now you are using the truth as a what? As a smoke screen to get fame. That's some evil stuff. Well, you don't get it. You don't get it. That's why the lot of you, I don't want to hear from you. All I want to hear from you is the scriptures. I want to hear questions. A lot of you, that's what I want to hear. Question, just ask the question. I want to know where you at. I want to know where you at in terms of your study. Where are you? Which chapter are you at? That's what I want to know. Okay. The house of Israel must be in order. What kind of men are we going to be when we allow this garbage to continue? That's not going to happen. Okay. Ray. The Lord your God which goeth before you, he shall fight for you according to all that he did for you in Egypt before your eyes. You see what he's saying? He says, the, he says I'm still behind you, but our people, our forefathers and foremothers, they did not have faith. You understand? That was the problem. They didn't have faith. And they saw all the wonders in Egypt. They still, when we were in the wilderness, they didn't believe the Lord. They didn't believe that the Lord was still going to deliver them. So in their minds, I was like, you know what? The Lord brought us here to kill us, to use these nations to kill us. Hold on. So the Lord will take you out of delivery, out of slavery, and bring you out so he can kill you. Because they did not have faith. There was void of faith. Give me that in Hebrews 4 real quick. Hebrews 4, verse 1. The book of Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 1. Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. Because that, that promise that will, seem to, that will seem to come short of some people, some of our brothers and sisters, is because of what? The lack of faith. You understand? Yeah, it's faith plus keeping of the commandment. It's not just, okay, I believe, I believe, I have to know. It's both. Faith plus commandment. Okay, come on. For unto us was the gospel preached, really? as well as unto them. The them but the word forefathers. preached did not. The them was our forefathers in the wilderness. He says, for unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them, our forefathers in the wilderness. They were taught the gospel. What gospel was they taught? Give me that in Deuteronomy 4. Okay, Deuteronomy 4, verse 44. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 44. And this is the law which Moses said before the children of Israel. The law. So the law that Moses taught before the children of Israel, our forefathers, that was the gospel. Go ahead. Come on. These are the testimonies and, and the statutes and the judgments which Moses spake unto the children of Israel after they came forth out of Egypt. So when we came forth out of Egypt, that's what the Lord said before us using Moses. He gave us the law. The testimonies and the statutes and the judgment, the punishment if you go against these laws. That's what the Lord, that is the gospel that was taught to us in the wilderness. 
Okay, go back to Hebrew, chapter four, verse two again. Hebrews chapter four, verse two. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. You see what was the problem? The gospel was preached unto them, you see that? But it says, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Meaning what? They had the word, they had the gospel, but they didn't have faith that the Lord will, still, will deliver them. Even after everything they saw, they still did not believe. Yes, they were keeping the command, but they didn't have faith that the Lord would believe them. And because they didn't have faith, that's why the complaining came in. So guess what today is called? Today is called slothfulness excuses. So yes, you keep in the law, quote unquote. Okay, I'm putting quote unquote by a reason for a reason. You are keeping the law, quote unquote, but you don't have faith that the Lord will deliver you. The faith comes in when you sit down and study. Okay, that's your works, because when you study, you apply. That's your works. You keep the commandments, and you the faith is that the Lord will deliver us out of this mess that we brought out, we put ourselves in. Now watch this. Jump up to the previous chapter, chapter 3, verse 16, just to prove that, uh, that our people in the wilderness was taught the gospel. Okay. Hebrews 3, verse 16. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 16. For some, when they had heard, did provoke. Howbeit, not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. Because a lot of that generation was put to death. Go ahead. But with whom was he grieved 40 years? Come on. Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? You see that thing? He says, but with whom was he grieved 40 years? Who was he grieved? Who was Moses grieved for 40 years? He was, he was grieved by the children of Israel. Our forefathers, they gave, we gave Moses hell. And so now, we were the ones that were taught the gospel, but we didn't believe the gospel. Okay? So that's what the apostle Paul is explaining to us here. Because you might ask yourself, why is he bringing this up? Because he wants us not to be fall into the same mistake that we made when we came out of Egypt. But because the Negro, the Negro's mindset is always on what? Is always on the what's going on in the world. The Negro's mind wants to be entertained. You see that that's the problem. The problem with the mind of the Negro is entertained. The Negro always wants to be entertained. The Negro cannot sit down in front of this Bible for hours studying. I remember before I went to the States, you know what I do? I mean, though, like on the Sabbath, because I was observing the Sabbath. You know what? I would wake up very early in the morning. I'd be up. The whole day, I'll be sitting at a corner on my desk. And I'll be going over script the whole day. And when I, would, when, when, when I would eat, I would eat right there. The Bible would be sitting right here, and I'll be eating. As I'm eating, I'm, I'm writing precepts. I'm connecting them, getting myself together, preparing. You know what? When it's time for me to go out there, I might not have it together, but guess what, what I'm doing? I'm studying for hours and hours on end, just sitting down, just be studying, preparing myself to go out there. You brothers have it easy. You don't got to work for nothing. You just be given pieces. This is a class you're going to teach. You're going to teach about this. Okay? No, go to YouTube. We have videos now. None of you go to our videos to watch them. None of you have registered on the website either. Because you don't believe this movement. You don't believe this. I'm showing you that the same generation back then in the wilderness is back today. Oh, yes, it is back today. But guess what? A lot of you are going to go, not me, not me, because you're not in this book. You don't get it. That's why when it comes out, it's like, yeah, okay, one year after other. Listen, time is ticking. Okay. Go back to Deuteronomy chapter one. Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse 3, verse 31. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 31. And in the wilderness, where thou hast seen how that the Lord thy God bare thee, as a man doth bear his son, in all the way that he went until he came into this place. The, see what the Lord did? The Lord, he carried us like a man carrying his son on his shoulders. 
That's what he did because we are the heirs of God. You see that thing? Give me that in uh, Exodus 4, verse 22. The book of Exodus, chapter 4, verse 22. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. You see that? We are God. We are the heirs of God. Okay? Go back to where was that now. You show me one, verse 31 again. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 31. And in the wilderness, where thou hast seen how that the Lord thy God bare thee, as a man doth bear his son, in all the way that he went, until he came into this place. The wilderness. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. Go ahead. Yet in this thing, you did not believe the Lord your God. You can make this stuff up. Yet in all of this that the Lord did, we did, we, he says, you still don't believe. You are still doubtful. With all the wonders that you've seen with your, with your naked eye, you still don't believe what the Lord is saying. So it is today. And guess what? Back then, our people, our forefathers and foremothers, they didn't have Facebook. They didn't have Instagram. They didn't have Twitter. They didn't have YouTube. Okay? They didn't have Google. There was no internet. So now, you have to really understand that they were distracted back then because of their lust. You understand? That's why the Lord, he gave them, they said they wanted flesh. He gave them flesh. And they devoured it. And guess what? The, the anger of the Lord was kindled against them. Okay, now, here's another one. So, guess what? Today, you see how many distractions are in the world right now? So many distractions. Like where there's a lot of distractions now. The women are half naked. Brothers becoming gay. You can sleep with whoever you want. You can find a prostitute online. Listen, there's a whole lot of distractions now going on. So, you really mean to tell me that shouldn't you actually be even adding more gas to your study? No, but not the Negro. Not the, the Negro don't think like that, though. That means now there's more temptations now than there's ever been before. Okay. Keep going. Read on. The 33. Who went in the way before you to set you out a place to pitch your tents in, in fire by night, to show you by what way you should go, and in a cloud by day. So if you read the history, you will know what this is about. Go ahead. And the Lord heard the voice of your words, and was wroth, and swear, saying, Surely there shall not one of these generations see that good land which I swear to give unto your fathers. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, because you don't believe, listen, you are, I'm going to put all of you to death. The people that are going to make it is Joshua, Caleb, and the children. Go ahead. Save Caleb, the son of Chofune. He shall see it. And to him will I give the land that he hath trodden, and to his children, because he hath wholly followed the Lord. Because he has wholly followed the Lord. Because guess what? This is this is in numbers now. Okay, read on. Also, the Lord was angry with me for your sakes, saying, Thou also shalt not go in thither. Because they were, guess what? Guess what they did? Really, they pushed Moses to the edge. Yeah. They did that's what they did. They pushed Moses to the edge. Moses went up the spirit. Okay. Right? That's why he keeps, he keeps reminding them of how he ended up in the place that he was. Go ahead. But Joshua, the son of Nun, which standeth before thee, he shall go in thither, encourage him, for he shall cause Israel to inherit it. Read. Right? Moreover, your little ones, which ye said should be a prey, and your children, which in that day had no knowledge between good and evil, they shall go in thither. And unto them will I give it, and they shall possess it. You see what the Lord is saying? He said, you Negroes, you are not going to see the promised land. But I'm going to take your children. Your children that we cannot even descend. They have no knowledge of good and evil and so forth. They are going to enter in. They are going to enter in. And they are the ones that are going to get the promised land. So because somehow, some crazy way, the mind of the Negro thinks, nah, this is just fairy tales. 
the Lord is not coming. Yeah, I hear that. Yeah, I can see they're reading it and all, but yeah, I don't really see that. But you won't say it out loud. I don't really see that. Now nah, are we going to go back to the wilderness? Yes, we're going to go back to the wilderness again. Where the Lord says, I'm going to take out of, from your among you the rebel. Then I'm, then I'm going to teach you again. Then you're going to enter into the kingdom. But guess what? Negroes don't believe it. You just think, no, what we're reading, these are just fairy tales. Although we have we have teaching aids, we have posters that we use at camp, Negroes still don't believe what is written. Oh, well, that's fine. We're going to keep it moving. Go ahead. But as for you, turn you and take your journey into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. Really? Then he answered and said unto me, we have sinned against the Lord. We will go up and fight according to all that the Lord our God commanded us. And when he had girded on every man his weapons of war, ye were ready to go up into the hill. Really? And the Lord said unto me, Say unto them, Go not up, neither fight, for I am not among you, lest ye be smitten before your enemies. So guess what? Now they say, Okay, now we want to go. No, no, now the Lord doesn't want that no more. He told you, do it this way and do it this time. Now you can, he said, no, I don't want to do it this time because I'm rebellious. I'm going to do my own thing. Despite how many counsels you receive, you just keep repeating the same thing over and over. He said, now I don't want to hear nothing. I'm not going to be among you. I'm not going to be with you, the Lord is saying. Read. So I spake unto you, and you would not hear, but rebelled against the commandment of the Lord and went presumptuously up into the hill. You see that thing? Meaning what? Self-will. They decided, well, we're going to go anyway. Read. And the Amorites, which dwelt in that mountain, came out against you and chased you, as bees do, and destroyed you in Seir, even unto Homa. You see what the, the Lord said? The Lord said, okay, you're going to go there. They're going to tow you. They're going to tear you up from the from top, head to toe. They're going to tear you up. And that's exactly what happened. Read on. And ye returned and wept before the Lord, but the Lord would not hearken to your voice, nor give ear unto you. Now that's heavy right there. Now they are coming down, they are crying now, because they got whooped by the Hamites. Now they are coming back, they are crying to the Lord. The Lord said, I don't want to hear nothing you said. I don't want to hear you. Watch this. Give me the book of Proverbs. You see, a lot of you, you think this is a fairy tale book. Proverbs chapter 1, start at verse, start at verse 23, now start at verse 22, we're going to read down. The book of Proverbs chapter 1 verse 22, how long is simple ones will you love simplicity and the scorners delight in their scorning and fools hate knowledge. So the Lord is saying the black man, the black woman, now let me deal with the black man. Is that the black man, how long you simple one? Will you love simplicity? How long are you going to be in la la land? Just acting dumb. The Lord is asking. Why is it because scorners delight in their scorning and fools hate knowledge? Order, structure, sit down, study. A fool doesn't want to do that. Okay, go ahead. A scorner and a fool, they don't want to do that. Thing. Ten. You understand? A scornful man and a foolish man, they don't want to do that. Okay, go ahead. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. So now the Lord is promising us, listen, I'm going to pour my spirit unto you. I will give you the understanding that is written in the spirit. Next verse. Because I have called and he refused. I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. That you know what this is talking about? Counsel. You receive counsel, study. Study. Be consistent. Put a timetable. Be consistent in your study. No, you don't do it. You always have to redo your timetable all the time. Who does that? A scornful man and, and foolish man. Okay, go ahead. But ye have said and not all my counsel. And would none of my reproof. Really? I also will laugh at your calamity. 
I will mock when your fear cometh. That's what we just read in Deuteronomy 1 verse 45. It says, because you don't want to listen to the counsel that's coming up, it says, I also will not be to calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. Because when you're supposed to receive the instruction, the correction, the counsel, the guidance, do this, do it, don't do this, do this, you decided, no, you know better, you know too much, you're going to do your own thing. So now judgment cometh, the Lord said, I'm going to not be to now. Okay, come on. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you, Read. then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, on that day when you come crying to me, I'm not going to hear nothing you say. I'm going to ignore you. That's what the Lord is saying. Read. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. He says they hated knowledge and don't choose the fear of the Lord. The knowledge that we're talking about is what we read in verse 22. Okay. Scorners delight in their scorning and fools hate knowledge. He says because you hate my knowledge, you hate my instruction, my reproof, my counsel. Guess what? When you come to me, I'm not going to hear nothing. And then on that day, you'll be judged. The Lord not going to hear nothing you say. Okay, come on. Verse 31, verse 30 now. They would none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. They despised all my reproof. Go ahead. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, then you're going to eat the fruit of your own way. What is the fruit of your own way? Sin. Now you're going to be consumed in that sin that you're in. And be filled with their own devices, meaning what? Your own wicked mind is what's going to get you killed. That's what the Lord is saying right here. Read on. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. You see what the, the prosperity of fools. What do fools prosper in? They prosper in sin. So the prosperity of fools is what's going to destroy you. What is the prosperity of fools? The things that happen in the world, your mind vibrates in that frequency. Your mind is supposed to be vibrating in the frequency of this Bible, but it's vibrating in the frequency of what's happening in the world. Oh, who's doing what? Who's doing that? Now, I'm just here, but I just want to get saved, but I'm not really here. I don't really take this thing as I should, because this is this book, this, this book right here, you will never finish it. Yeah, you can read the whole book, but guess what? Whenever you read it, you will always find a new thing. The Lord will open your spirit if you're serious. And there's a Lord in this book. That's why not anybody is going to get it. Not everybody is going to be worthy enough to the Lord to allow them. So you have to labor to get it. He's not going to fall on your lap. Like Uchibi Joshua said, no, he ate, the, he ate the roll. Now you know. No, no, that's just a lie. You have to sit down and study the book. Make notes. Do scorecards. You have, listen, it's a whole shebang. This is a school. But when it comes to ESO stuff, you will sit down and study the stuff. You will sit down and make sure that you get your stuff done when it comes to ESO. What ESO wants, you don't listen. They, nobody has even there to tell you. You know exactly what to do. You know the amount of hours that you're going to put in to do it. When it comes to this, guess what? It's always at the back seat. Hmm. Keep going. Verse 32. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. Read. But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely, and shall be quiet from fear of evil. Because guess what? You know that you are keeping the commandments. You understand? You are sincere in doing it. When the Lord comes bring forth judgment, guess what you're going to do? The Lord will deal with you according to his mess. He is not going to be harsh. Okay? Watch this. Let's go back to Deuteronomy chapter 1. Verse 45 again. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 45. And he returned and wept before the Lord, but the Lord would not hearken to your voice, nor give ear unto you. Read. So he abode in Kadesh many days, according unto the days that he abode there. So now I'm going to end the class right here. I'm going to end it right here, right here. Okay. I'm still there's more classes are coming on this. 23, let's break bread. 
in the honor of our Lord and Savior the Christ. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye to show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the most high hand for that class. So praise to the most high.